everyone. Thanks for tuning in to our Marsh Monday series. Today, we are going to finish up our series by talking about marsh fishes. Now, if you haven't seen any of the episodes, you've missed us talking about detritus and marsh plants and how to use a seine net as well as marsh invertebrates. You should probably go and check those out. But if you want to learn more about the marsh fishes, thank you for joining us and let's head to the marsh. Now we're going to talk about fish that call the marsh their home. Remember, the marsh is a nursery ground, so these fish are juveniles. As soon as they're done growing up here, they'll graduate and move farther into Mobile Bay, and sometimes even farther offshore into the Gulf of Mexico. The fish that I have in here, we have this fish called a spot. It is a bottom feeding fish. Its mouth opens up, points down. It has a flat base on its tail and I'm gonna put it back in the water because we don't want them to be too uncomfortable, but we do want people to be able to learn about them. Uh, spot are very common here in the bay. Uh, a lot of people go out, they catch them, they're used as bait. Um, they're an excellent fish for other larger predators to eat. So they do do a lot to support the food web. Some of the other predatory fish that you'll find around here, things like speckled trout. These fish have very sharp teeth. They are definitely top predators, maybe not as high up as a shark or a dolphin, but they are going to be chowing down on other fish when they get big enough and they move out of the marsh. They've got that beautiful speckled or spotty pattern, which is one of the ways that they get their name. Now, the last fish in this jar, this is a fun one. Looking at this fish, Joanne and I talked about this one. Its tail looks like the tail of a croaker, but it's got that dark spot back there, which is very characteristic of redfish or red drum. The spots up here are also not super common on the croakers that we regularly see. They're more common to a fish called a ground mullet, except a ground mullet has a little nubbin or a barbel underneath its chin, and this fish doesn't have it. So Joanne and I have all made our guesses. Joanne thought it could potentially be a weird looking croaker. I thought because of the spot on the tail, it could potentially be a redfish. But this is a good example of how you never really know exactly what everything is. And there's always someone out there who's an expert in the matter and you can go. And so we're gonna ask our expert. I think that's a red drum. And our expert fish uh, person in the department um, has identified it just as what you just heard. So that's what that fish is. Very cool, very fun stuff to find. All right, last set of fish that I want to talk about that we caught here back in our tidal pond. Fish that they've got these black vertical stripes going down their body. But these are two different species of fish. Again, we have our pinfish which sometimes has black vertical bars, but a lot of times has horizontal blue and gold stripes, which is one of the ways you can tell them uh, apart from other fish around here. Like I said earlier, these fish get their name because they have very sharp spines that come out of their back fin or their dorsal fin. So these fish are not fun to grab like this and get those dorsal spines into your hand. The other fish that we caught, this one is a full-time marsh professional. We find them almost every time we come to the marsh. They're here in the winter, spring, summer, fall, high tide, low tide. This is the long nose that was, and this is the long nose killifish. Also has those black vertical bars go up and down the sides. Now these fish are very good at dealing with living in an intertidal habitat. Being intertidal means sometimes the tide is high, the marsh is very, very flooded, very, very wet. Other times that tide goes down. Low tide is the lowest the water level will be for the entire day. And that can be very, very low. And we're talking like 
will walk back here with dry feet in some of these spots, especially there's a little sandbar that goes out in the middle here, and that could be totally out of the water. Now, if you're a fish and you get trapped in one of those shallow puddles, that could cause you some problems. These fish are good to go as long as their gills can stay moist, but you also don't want to get eaten by any of the birds that are flying around back here because that makes you really easy prey. So this fish will actually bury itself in the sand, keep the gills moist, stay hidden, and wait for that tide to come back in. So they are full-time marsh professionals. Very cool fish. Thanks for joining us for our Marsh Monday series. We've had a lot of fun, but it's time for us to change gears. Tune in next week as we begin our exploration of the other habitats here on Dauphin Island.